Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you what I think is the best way to implement a search in Android. So this will be a very flexible approach for implementing a search. So you can very easily then configure that and adjust it to your needs. So to just show you what we'll build here, we just have a list of some persons here and we can then easily search for one. For example, for Philip, then there is a little bit of delay. We see a loading animation and it will then show our name. We can remove it again. It will show all names. If we search for, for example, just P, then it will show all persons with the letter P in it. We can also very easily define custom search rules. For example, if we type the person's initials, PL, it will also find that person. And as you can also see, um, there's always a little bit of a delay for 500 milliseconds after we actually change the text. So if you, for example, have a network query and you don't want to execute that on every single kind of keystroke, then with this approach, we'll first of all wait until the user finished typing and then we will fire off the search. For this, we will use a very cool approach with Kotlin flow operators, which you will learn about in this video. So let's dive into an empty Jetpack Compose project here in Android Studio. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a main view model. So the search logic will happen in our main view model since that's just UI mapping logic. So we create that class here, make sure that's a view model. And in here we will define our different states. Which states do we need for this? Well, on the one hand, we of course need a state for our search text. So we say private val underscore search text is equal to immutable state flow. And that will just be an empty string by default. We then have our public um, exposed version of this search text, which we can set to search text as state flow. So just that we make sure that the view model can change the mutable one, but the UI should not be able to change it. So we just expose this immutable version. So let's go ahead and create the next state, which will be for is searching, which we'll use to show the progress bar or hide it. And that will be immutable state flow, initially false. So initially we're not searching obviously. And then we also do the same stuff for is searching, is searching as state flow. And finally, we do need one more state which reflects our list of persons that we want to show. And for that, we of course, first of all, need a data class person. So in a real project, that class would likely go in your domain layer. Um, for the, the sake of simplicity, I will just keep it in the same file here. Each person will have a first name, which is a string, and each person will have a last name which is a string. And then we can take this class we just created and also create a person's state. So immutable state flow of a list of person. Initially, it's an empty list. We will yeah, actually define some kind of default persons here, but you, that could also be just a list that comes from your API or so. I will not go ahead and create the uh, exposed version of persons yet because that will be the version we will apply the flow operators to. So it won't be as simple as this, um, but I will explain that when we get to it and we will get to it in a moment. But first of all, I actually just want to paste my predefined persons here. Um, feel free to define your own ones or just copy these from my GitHub repository, which you will find down below, of course, as usual. Um, so what do we actually need before we can implement the actual search logic? I like to have a function uh, that defines if a certain person matches our search query or not. And I want to define that function here in our person class since it's kind of business logic. And we can say, for example, does match search query. We pass our query here simply as a string and we'll then return a Boolean whether we want to include that person in our search results or not. And this will really just be an example of what we could implement here. Um, what I will do is I will have a list here called matching combinations, which will be a list of strings because um, we want to be kind of as friendly or convenient to our users as possible. So if the user, for example, searches for Philip Lagner without a space, we want to include that in the search results. If they write that with a space, we want to include that. And as I said, we want to implement a custom rule. If we search for just the initials, then we also want to include that in the search results. And these kind of different combinations we will define in our list here. So on the one hand, one combination would be that we just have our first names uh, written just before our last name. We can then also have the same with a space in between. And we can have the same um, with just the initials. So the first character of our first name and the, la uh, the, the first character of our last name. Um, of course, this was, would crash here if these strings would be empty. I will just assume they are not. But of course, in real app, you need to do some more validation here. And then to actually return whether we want to include that person or not, 
we can return matching combinations dot any. So if there is any combination for which this, exp this boolean that we define here in this block is true. So I want to find if there's any combination where the combination contains our search query. And we also want to say ignore case is true. So um, it doesn't matter if we if the user uh, writes the query in uppercase or lowercase. So we just go through these three strings here and check, okay, um, if this string actually contains our query, for example, if our query is um, ip, then this will be true for Philip because Philip obviously contains ip. So I think that should make sense. We then want to go up to our review model again and define a function on search text change, which we will just call from the UI whenever the user tapped something. And here we just say search text.value is equal to text. And now we can get to the exciting part and that is actually applying the search logic. And I want to do that with a flow operator or with a few flow operators, which we can do here. So we want to specify persons, which is the ex post version of our person's state. And we always want to trigger our search when our search text changes. So we need to make this dependent on our search text state flow. And then we want to call that combine. I want to combine it with our person state. So what this will mean is that this block will always be called if either the search text or our person state changes. So we get a reference to our search text and to our current person state. So that way, if we change our search text, then we can now map the result of our final exposed persons list to whatever we specify here. And if we change our person state, for example, if we load more entries from the API, then this will make sure that we automatically apply the, the current search query to these. And in here, we wanna check if our text, so our search query is actually blank so if we didn't type anything, because then we simply want to map this to our persons list as it is. So we just show all persons if the text is blank. Else, so if the user types something that is not an empty text, we want to take our persons and we want to filter these because we now effectively want to search for something. And what is the condition we filter these for? Well, we can simply say it dot does match search query and we pass our query here. If you need to have this as really scaling logic, what you could also do is you could create an interface called searchable, for example, which every class then implements that is in a list that is searchable because that way you could effectively also make this a list of searchables or kind of any parent class you implement, which then has this uh, function here does match search query. But I think, uh, yeah, uh, if you want to have some kind of more individual behavior, you will need this function for every single class independently. And we can then say, okay, down here, we will have state in, which will effectively convert this to a state flow because right now, if we would not have this, take a look on here, then we just have a normal flow. But we want a state flow. We want the flow to keep the latest value and cache it. So that is why we use state in to convert a normal flow to our state flow. We pass our view model scope, so it will launch the flow in our view model scope. Sharing started will be sharing started while subscribed, and we pass five seconds so that if the uh, subscribe and collector from our UI disappears, this block and these operators will still be executed for five more seconds. And then finally, the initial value will just be our persons.value. So the initial value we specified in here. And by the way, we can also replace this with our all persons um, list that we defined down below. And right now what this will do is it would, yeah, it would pretty much be an instant search. So if you just want to implement a local search and the search is not very CPU heavy like here, then this is the uh, approach that I would suggest here because yeah, the user will instantly see the results. And before I will show you how you can also add some kind of delay and uh, search animations, I want to try this and implement that in our UI. So let's go to main activity and actually define a column. So we will stack a text field on top of a list. The modifier for this will be modifier fill max size. We then want to go ahead and create a text field where the value is actually what we now get from our view model. So let's create that first val view model is equal to view model, the green one here. And you will probably not have this um, function here, uh, main view model. If you don't have that, then you need to include a dependency that I already included, which is pretty much this uh, lifecycle view model compose dependency. Feel free to write that off now or copy it over from my GitHub. If you have that, want to go in here and say we have our 
search text by view model a dot search text collect as state alt enter to import that and that will automatically update when our state flow changes we then also want to have our person state by view model persons collect as state and when we're already um, doing that we can also do that for our is searching boolean which we're not using yet collect as state like this and then for our text field the value of that will of course be our search text on value change will be view model double colon on search text change so we just update the search text in our view model we want to make sure that it fills the whole width of our screen and we want to make sure that the placeholder is something like text search or whatever you want to use as a hint for that text field um, and let's also add some padding to our outer column of 16 dp import dp pressing alt enter and below this text field let's have a spacer of 16 dp height and then we have our lazy column that will show our person list um, so let's actually add a modifier to this lazy column modifier is modifier dot fill max width and for the height we use a weight of 1f so it will just occupy the remaining space of our layout then in here we will have an items block since we want to display a list of items and that will be our person state and for every single person we can now simply display a text composable very simple where the text will be um, person dot first name space and person oops person dot last name like this we can then also add a modifier modifier dot fill max width and we say each item has a padding of just vertical padding actually of 16 dp because the horizontal padding is already added from this outer column and that should already be enough to have a working search if we now launch this on my emulator take a look here there's still the old app and wait for gradle to actually finish building there we go here's our search field and if we now search for something we should be able to see instant results so philip yes that is working perfectly fine the initials are working if we search for chris then that's working for yeah all these names are working for our search but what if you now have a search that requires um, a network connection or rather a search that makes an actual HTTP call to your API and the API responds with the search results. Then you definitely don't want to make that API call on every single keystroke here. Or the same would apply if you have, um, if your search, for example, depends on a very complex database query, then you also probably wouldn't want to have this instant search, but rather some kind of delay to give the user time to actually finish typing. So in that case, what we can do is we can apply a very simple flow operator in our main view model to our person's state flow. And that operator is called debounce. So debounce will actually take in an amount of milliseconds, which you can set to 500, for example. And we need to add this um, flow preview annotation here. So Alt Enter, opt in for this, and then the warning will go away. What this debounce operator will do is, whenever the search text now changes, this will kind of add a delay before the other blocks are actually executed. And if the search text changes before that delay is over, the old kind of emission will be canceled. So if the search text changes and it does not change again within the next 500 milliseconds, then this combined block will be executed. So in our case, it will be executed for the very last keystroke where the user does not type for 500 milliseconds. And of course, you can very easily customize that amount and change it to your needs. Let's change it to one second. So it's just a little bit more obvious when we try this out. Um, launch this again. And then take a look in here. There we go. And if we now type something like Philip, then one second. Okay, and now it actually shows our search results. Um, so that's very cool. One second, it shows our search results. So that's a very easy way to implement this kind of behavior. Let's now also say we actually have our network call and we want to show our progress bar when we're searching. For that, we already implemented our is searching Boolean. And yeah, we basically only need to change that before we trigger this combine block and after it. So before we can say on each is searching that update and we update it to true here since now we start searching. And here I would always use update to update the value in a thread safe manner since yeah, in these flow operators, 
we we are on a different threat or we might be on a different threat than our view model is running in so there could be potentially a race conditions that happen when updating this but by using update we make sure that can happen and then before our state in we also want to have an on each again where we say is searching that update and we update it to false again then going back to our main activity um, we actually only want to display our lazy column if we are not searching so if we are searching we do this and else we can actually show our lazy column. If we're searching, let's just have a box, modifier, fill max size. And we say we have a circular progress indicator where we set the modifier to modifier align and we put it in the center of our screen. If we then launch this again, take a look here, then you will be able to see if we now type Philip, uh, you will actually not see any animation um, because the search is still instant because uh, this filter function directly returns since it's so fast um, to simulate a network call we could add some artificial delay here let's say two seconds relaunch this take a look and now type philip then progress bar will appear and after that it will show our search results so in your real life scenario Instead of this delay, you would actually need to make the network call and then filter based on the results you get from that. So I hope you liked this video and learned more about flow operators and searching. If you did, then you will definitely also love my advanced premium courses about Android development that will teach you how you can become an industry-ready Android developer. If that sounds cool to you, then you will find all these courses in the first link of this video's description. And apart from that, I will wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.